Hello and welcome to John's Author Diary for the week ending January the 12th, 2020. I nearly said 2019 then. So this is the first proper episode I've recorded this year. Obviously the last one was a thing about my goals and I recorded that back in December. I don't think I did any work between Christmas and New Year. I just hung out with my family. Santa bought my son a Wii U for Christmas. So this is basically the console between the Nintendo Wii and the Switch. And so he's been playing on Mario Maker and Minecraft and Pokemon fighting tournament or something. So he's been having a lot of fun with that. I was unwilling to spend the money to get him a Switch. You know, he's only seven. So, you know, maybe when he's older, he can have new consoles. But I thought this was a nice compromise. So Christmas we spent at home. That was great. And then I think the day after Boxing Day, we went to a bit of a Christmas get together at my mother-in-law's and then... For New Year, we spent a few days in Shipley with old friends. So they've got a house that overlooks a valley where you can see all the way across to Bingley. And at midnight, there were thousands of fireworks. It was absolutely insane. So it was quite a spectacle to see that. And then my wife and I just hung around in Shipley. I met up with an author friend who lives in Bradford. She's one of the people who alpha reads my Ravenglass Chronicles and it was really cool to catch up with her. I think we've only met a couple of times in person, mostly doing interactions on Facebook groups and Messenger and things like that. So it's just really cool to have those personal connections with people. And it was also cool just to have a walk around Salt Air. It's a really nice place. I, I like the kind of Victorian industrial landscape, the old mills and the churches and the terrace houses and things like that. And it was good to visit a old school pub called Fanny's Ale House. So I've been there a few times, but it's just nice to go to a good Yorkshire pub that doesn't feel like it's part of a corporate chain or anything like that. And had some good beers, had a good curry as well. So that was tremendous. So over the holidays as well, I got into a program which I now see as my guilty pleasure. So this is a show called Ancient Aliens on Netflix. Now, this is one of those programs which is just to describe it as pseudo history would be giving a discredit to pseudo historians. It's a great case of logical fallacy on top of logical fallacy. It's ridiculous, but this is one of those occasions with the let's not throw the baby out with the bathwater. You know, I've been doing a lot of reading about ancient civilizations. I'm fascinated by the subject, and this program has just some amazing footage of Neolithic ruins, pyramids. Places like Gepli Tepe in Turkey and things like that. So it's fascinating just to explore these structures and to see some of their amazing features. So I'm not too bothered about the ancient alien stuff. People can go on about that all they want, whatever, I don't care. But the footage and just the explorations of these buildings makes it worth it for me. So before Christmas, I decided to do a social media blackout. So I was off Facebook. I mean, I've been off Twitter anyway, but I just completely went off Twitter and I was off Facebook for 40 days, so I went back on it last weekend. Now, I run an accountability group, so it was good to see that that was still going, that people were still doing posts about how they were getting on. So it was really good to get back into that. I think what I found, which is great, is I have no compunction, no desire to be on Facebook and scrolling and things like that. So I've literally gone on a couple of times. So I went on on Sunday to sort out the accountability group and then I went on a Thursday to do it again I'm also involved in a author cross promotion thing so I've only been on it a couple of times and I've been on with purpose you know I went on this morning to post the link on the sci-fi roundtable to the sci-fi roundtable podcast so it's just a really healthier relationship I'm having with social media now I'm not getting drawn in to the newsfeed stuff I've actually put on a plugin for Chrome called Newsfeed Eradicator and this is great. It replaces your news feed with an inspirational quote. And the one I had last time I was on there said, if you think you can, or if you think you can't, you're right. I mean, granted, the quote was by Henry Ford, who was a bit of an anti-Semite, let's say. But again, don't throw out the baby with the bathwater. So in terms of writing, I got back to the writing desk on Monday. And I also started getting up at 5am again. Now, this was really difficult because my sleep pattern just because of not doing the work you know basically having a bit of time off having a bit of a chill I was getting up six o'clock five o'clock things like that before the holidays trying to get up at five but sometimes it'd be six I was having lies in I was getting up at nine so basically I had to adjust my sleep pattern by four hours so 
Monday, fine, perfect, got on with it. Tuesday again, Wednesday again, brilliant. Thursday, I think it was a combination of the season effective stuff and maybe just being tired from the sleep pattern change, but I was absolutely completely wiped out. And then I'm recording this Friday afternoon and I've done work this morning and I think what I'm going to do now, it's sunny, I'm going to go for a walk, I'm going to get some sunshine, have a walk along the prom, take advantage of the fact that it is a nice still day. So I've actually been trying an experiment this week with my writing. Previously what I've tried to do is race through my first draft of one of these Ravenglass books, write, 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 just get it done, get to the end and then I will do second draft and then third draft and then edits and proofread and things like that what i'm doing now is a bit of a different process and it feels slower but i don't think it is i've been tracking my word count so i don't think it is when i was looking at how productive i am early in the morning things like that i realized that actually trying to dictate at 5 30 a.m is no good i'm really slow so redrafting is fine so what i've been doing is redrafting where i got up to on the previous writing session and then dictating my next lot of chapters and then after lunch start working on the redraft of blind reset so i've been going along with that slowly but surely getting through that redraft and i'm also writing temperance which is book 14 of the ravenglass chronicles it does feel like slow progress in terms of total word count on the document for temperance but i think when i'm finished i'll only have to do the third draft rather than spending a couple of weeks looking at the screen so this is basically my way of trying to reduce eye strain trying to reduce the amount of time i'm actually looking directly at the screen and i also realize that i need to just keep on with blind reset i need to chip away at it because i've got that on pre-order for september same with wasteland 4 so they both need doing so my ravenglass chronicles box set that i released in september is still doing really well I'm really pleased with how that is continuing to sell. I had my best month ever in publishing in December. I know I said that about November, but I made 50% more in December than I did November. So I hope that continues. I am bracing myself for a drop, for a complete dip in sales, but it hasn't come yet. So here's to hoping that it continues. I'm willing it once my pay for November comes in. So the way Amazon works is they're usually a couple of months behind. So I will get paid for November at the end of January. So I will then have the cash flow that I've been desperate for for ages to pay for consistent adverts. So adverts on Facebook and things like that, just to get more people into the series. But it does feel exciting to be in a position where I'm earning more than my wife. And this has never happened, so that's pretty cool. And to celebrate the success with the box set, On Tuesday, my wife and I went and booked us a holiday. We're going to Tenerife next October. So this is basically my effort to try and get some sunshine before November kicks in because I am sick of the drudgery of these winter months. I finished watching the Amazon series The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. I really enjoyed this. It's a story of a comedian. She's a divorcee in the late 1950s going on to early 60s. It has some historical characters like Lenny Bruce and things like that. So really enjoy the dialogue in it. I think it's really snappy, quick, witted dialogue. And I just love how bizarre the main character's parents are. It's worth watching if you've got Amazon Prime. Just check it out. It's, it's really good. Last night as well, I was on a podcast called Now You've Seen It. So this will come out on February 2nd, which is Groundhog Day. Now the reason why is because we reviewed Groundhog Day starring Bill Murray. Now, this is a movie that I understand is a classic. I've never watched it before. So it's really cool to watch that movie and to look at it with a bit of a story head on. And what I realised basically was it was really fun and the time loop concept was actually very cool. But I felt there were some real issues with the storytelling. But I enjoyed it nonetheless. A lot of great humour in there. I think Bill Murray is very underrated as an actor. I think what was interesting was thinking about how long the Bill Murray character was actually stuck in that time loop and one of the panellists on the show thought, you know, six weeks, six months, something like that. My estimate is probably somewhere in the region of 15 to 20 years. This is based on the fact that he becomes good enough on piano to play Rachmaninoff. You know, that requires a lot of practice. He learned to ice sculpt, he learned languages, he got to know the ins and outs of all the events that were going on in that town. And so, yeah, if you've not seen it before, it's definitely worth a watch. If you have, watch it again. 
finally, because I've been going on for so long now, I've realised I've just been talking non-stop. I'm reading a book called The Obstacle is the Way by Ryan Holiday. Now, I really like Ryan Holiday's books. He's written quite a few about stoicism. And it seems I've been reading them in reverse. So I started off with Stillness is the Key and then Ego is the Enemy and now The Obstacle is the Way. They're basically the other way around in terms of order. But it doesn't seem like it really makes a difference which order you read them in. It's not like a series or anything like that. So I would highly recommend checking out his books. So I'm going to leave it there now. Hope you have a great week. I will be back next week to talk about my progress on temperance. And I'm sure it won't be such a rambly episode. So until next time, cheerio. (laughs) 